Physiology and Pathogenesis of Parkinson's Disease. The basis of Parkinson's disease is a progressive degeneration of nigral dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compactor. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that facilitates the transfer of motor information through the cerebral cortex, basal ganglia and thalamus as a direct loop by the activation of cells in the putamen. When dopaminergic cells are depleted in Parkinson's disease, the motor loop that supplies the supplementary motor area is impaired thus terminating direct innervation to the distal motor units via the basal ganglia and ventral lateral nucleus. Alternate research has proposed that Parkinson's disease follows a specific pathology sequence in which disease begins in the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve, as pictured on the right. The pathway then travels to the olfactory bulbs and nucleus, concluding in the locus corellis where the degeneration and loss of dopaminergic neurons appears in the substantia nigra pars compactor. As a result, previously less susceptible nuclei and cortical areas in the cerebral cortex become affected and begin degeneration. The consequent impairment of motor skills commonly associated with Parkinson's disease, such as rigidity, tremor, bradykinesia, and often dyskinesia, are directly correlated with the inhibition of the nigrostriatal pathway that occurs with the loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compactor. The majority of Parkinson's disease cases are sporadic and patients are usually diagnosed with idiopathic Parkinson's disease. The exception is patients with a hereditary link to Parkinson's disease, where their risk of development from a first degree relative with the disease is two to threefold that of sporadic cases. While this increase over sporadic cases is large, researchers have established that a hereditary link is not deemed a major etiological component in most Parkinson's disease cases. Inherited cases of Parkinson's disease are believed to be caused by pathogenic mutations that stimulate abnormal and sometimes toxic protein structures. The recessive or familial genes identified as causing pathogenic mutations include acinucleine, parkin, UCHL1, PINK1, DJ1, and dardarin. Researchers have hypothesized that the proteins encoded by these genes correlate with protein aggregation and proteasome function, causing the loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compactor. This damage is believed to occur due to the deformation of the cells, in addition to interference in intracellular, intracellular neural pathways. Other studies have suggested that mitochondrial and protein metabolism dysfunction resulting in oxidative stress is the biggest contributor to dopaminergic neuron death. The trigger for oxidative stress has been linked to damage created by reactive oxygen species. It is believed that normal metabolism of dopamine is the creator of these harmful reaction oxygen species. As the amount of tissue for abnormally oxidized proteins amplifies with age, the neurons are increasingly susceptible to damage as normal cell regeneration is compromised. The abnormality of the oxidative process is, however, not completely confined to the brain with irregularities found in the platelets of some Parkinson's patients identified as reduced complex one activity. The theory of oxidative stress as a mechanism for Parkinson's disease also suggests that patients may have reduced antioxidant system capabilities. This deficiency is believed to occur as normal metabolism of dopamine by monoamine oxidase requires glutathione to clear peroxide, which is formed as a byproduct. Unfortunately, patients with Parkinson's disease have decreased levels of glutathione, therefore more reactive oxygen species are potentially formed, further damaging dopaminergic neurons. In vivo trials have shown that the familial gene DJ1 can protect dopaminergic neurons from oxidative stress in the substantia nigra. Research from Kim et al. in 2005 has provided results confirming this protection extends in vitro to protect neurons from oxidative stress by influencing the interaction of neurons and glia. These results have also demonstrated that a reduction in DJ1 can increase the sensitivity of dopaminergic neurons to oxidative stress, 
promoting neurodegeneration and disease progression. However, a reduction in DJ1 alone cannot initiate the degenerative process and is completely independent of non-oxidative stresses. The presence of Lewy bodies and microgliolysis have also been found in patients with Parkinson's disease. These Lewy bodies have been found to contain acinucleine, which has been modified as a result of oxidative stress. In vitro, this oxidatively modified acinucleine displays a greater tendency to aggregate. Another mechanism identified as a contributor to dopaminergic neuronal cell death is neurotoxicity. The chemical MPTP is predominantly associated with the destruction of dopamine as the active metabolite of MPTP, MPP+, inhibits mitochondrial complex 1 during uptake to the brain by dopaminergic neurons, leading to an impairment on respiration. Research has discovered that continuous infusions of MPTP can reduce acute toxicity as peak MPP plus concentrations are decreased but chronic impairment to dopaminergic and noradrenic neurons will still result. Impairments include degeneration of dopaminergic and noradrenic neurons, loss of dopamine and norepinephrine, but not of serotonin, formation of inclusion bodies in the substantia nigra and locus corellis, behavioral changes that were reversed by dopamine receptor agonists, and long-lasting inhibition of the ubiquitin proteasum system. Current research suggests that environmental and genetic factors are the major contributors to the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease, with both strongly supported by epidemiological studies. Numerous mechanisms for environmental and genetic factors have been proposed, including exogenous toxins, inflammation, genetic mutations, or a combination of the above. It is believed that a combination of genetic predisposition and environmental factors result in mitochondrial respiratory failure and oxidative stress allowing degeneration of dopaminergic neurons. The majority of recent studies are currently concluding that exposure to herbicides and pesticides in residents in a rural area greatly increases the risk for development of Parkinson's disease. The risk was heightened for particular herbicides with a similar chemical structure to MPTP as they can stimulate the aggregation of acinucleine. The ability for the cells to deal with this aggregation also steadily diminishes with age. The strongest factor linked to the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease is age. Research into Parkinson's disease in younger patients has shown that the pathophysiology can be linked to an increasingly high vulnerability of damaged cells and secondly, exposure to high doses of toxic chemicals. However, disease progression has proven to be slower in younger patients, but they are more prone to dyskinesia and impulse control disorders. This research has further established that the increased vulnerability of cells that result in damaged molecules may come from a direct result of the aging process, concluding that the older a patient is diagnosed, the worse the prognosis will be. A possible explanation for this conclusion is the substitution of sodium channels for calcium channels during the aging process. The change increases cell firing rates and calcium uptake into the cells, allowing neuronal cell death. Further research can support this theory as calcium channel blockers, <clears throat> such as isradiophine, act on dopaminergic cells, preventing increased calcium uptake, thereby prolonging cell life. <clears throat> Practical applications for exercise physiologists. Research has found that cigarette smoking and caffeine intake are associated with a reduction in the development of Parkinson's disease. This may have implications in the development of other chronic health conditions, especially if patients believe it can alleviate their symptoms after the fact. Cigarette smoking has been linked to a large range of chronic diseases, including cancer, heart attacks, coronary heart disease, atherosclerosis and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Excessive caffeine intake can also be linked to heart problems that can become life-threatening. It is important that a thorough pre-screening of a patient's medical history is undertaken with discussion of smoking history and caffeine intake before treatment begins to identify any underlying risk factors for disease. In Parkinson's patients, the emergence of levodopa-induced dyskinesias or LIDS can either hinder their daily life or have little to no impact. 
For some patients, even dyskinesia with mobility is tolerated. However, if dyskinesias begin to worsen, there are significant implications for the exercise physiologist. Firstly, there is a high risk that lids will lead to exhaustion and fatigue, thus increasing the risk of injury, particularly when using exercise as a treatment modality. The physiologist must also be aware that the constant movements caused by lids can lead to weight loss, discomfort and physical limitation. Other factors to consider are the mental health impacts of lids such as social isolation, frustration, anger and depression. From a healthcare perspective, lids will often arise when the disease is progressing, usually resulting in an increase in levodopa dosage. Consequently, this dosage increase often leads to a worsening in lids, but a dose reduction could increase disease progression. It is therefore imperative for physiologists to know their patient's Parkinson's history, levodopa dose and dyskinesia symptoms to ensure all implications for treatment have been carefully considered and the patient's safety risk has been minimised. Deficiencies in antioxidant systems are common amongst Parkinson's disease patients due to the effect of reactive oxygen species. As normal antioxidant function is required during the metabolism of proteins, carbohydrates and lipids for daily living, it may be crucial for some patients to include supplementation of vital macro and micronutrients into their diet for optimal function in relation to the progression of individual neural neuronal degeneration. It is important that exercise physiologists consider a patient's current diet when planning rehabilitation programs so they do not further compromise the patient's health, inducing further oxidative stress. While the cause of Parkinson's disease remains unclear, it is understood that the progressive degeneration of nigral dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compactor allows for the continual demise of patient's health. Although more research is necessary to uncover the causative factors that initiate dopaminergic cell death, the pathogenesis of Parkinson's is much clearer. Current research suggests that a combination of mechanisms, including oxidative stress, neurotoxicity through environmental and genetic factors, and age, all contribute to the progression of disease and symptoms for Parkinson's patients. <clears throat> While levodopa is currently the main treating drug, it, is, it also has limitations in controlling the progression of cell degeneration. Overall, it is imperative that exercise physiologists carefully consider all the factors that impact a patient with Parkinson's disease before planning a rehabilitation program based on exercise modality.